And now, here is your forecast first, sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Temperatures are close to average today in the Quad Cities. Most of us sitting very close to 60 right now. It's 55 in Clinton, 59 in Alito, 59 in Muscatine. Sunshine early today. Now we've had some clouds fill in and there is rain in the forecast for us on Tuesday. Here's my forecast first. There are no weather problems to worry about tonight. The sun will be setting here in about five minutes. The chance for showers arrives by the morning and showers are likely by lunchtime tomorrow. I'll have much more on a rainy Tuesday coming up in just a little bit on Local 4 News at 6. Several shots fired in two of the Quad Cities. How a chase by what one person called a parade of police cars came to an end. And the approval rating for Illinois lawmakers is slipping what Governor Bruce Rauner had to say on his trip to the Quad Cities. WHBF is local for you. This is Local 4 News at 6. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Needleman. And I'm Tiffany Lundberg. Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News at 6. Bettendorf police are still trying to figure out what set off a shooter who opened fire in Davenport and Bettendorf earlier this afternoon. It happened around 2 o'clock. Officers in Davenport say they responded to a call of shots fired around East 39th Street and Davenport Avenue. A little later, Bettendorf police got a call after shots rang out on the 4500 block of Utica Ridge Road. That's where Local 4's Greta Patrick is live this evening. Greta, what's going on there? outside uh, at that area tonight. Jim and Tiffany, Bettendorf police are wrapping up their investigation of the crime scene here on Utica Ridge Road in Bettendorf. Bettendorf police told Local 4 News there were reports of shots fired around 2 p.m. this afternoon in Davenport on the 700 block of Kimberly Road. There was an active shooter in the building which housed office spaces and a military career center. Davenport police have confirmed that the military center was not the target. Police say the shooting occurred at one of the office spaces and two people there reported superficial injuries related to the incident. And when Davenport police arrived on the scene. The shooter was already gone. Then Bettendorf police responded to the area here between the Remax and the Miller and Meyer orthotics where the gunman had fled to. And as police arrived on the scene, he then pulled a gun on himself and fired one fatal shot. Police say that was the only fatality reported. Now the crime scene investigators are still here, but earlier today there were U.S. Marshals, FBI, Scott Sh County, rather, Sheriff's Department, and witnesses say they used rifles to try to control the situation, and they also told people close to the scene to remain inside until the situation calmed down. No other information has been released on the gunman or any description of him at this time. Live in Bettendorf, Greta Patrick, Local 4 News at 6. Greta, thank you. A woman is dead after a high-speed street race in Davenport yesterday afternoon. Police say it happened in the 3500 block of West Kimberly Road. Officers say a Nissan Sentra and a Grand Prix were racing when they hit an SUV turning east on Kimberly Road. The driver and two passengers of the SUV were taken to Genesis East. The back, uh, back seat passenger rather later died from her injuries. The 17-year-old driver of that Grand Prix was charged with homicide by vehicle. The 37-year-old driver of the Nissan Sentra was injured and charges are pending. A plea deal reached with a teenager charged with murder in Moline will keep him from getting a life sentence. A guilty plea to an amended count of murder came from 17-year-old Lamry Wilson Newleap. He also pleaded guilty to aggravated battery with a firearm for a deadly shooting in the spring. Wilson Newleap killed 19-year-old Zach Phillips and wounded 18-year-old Eric Robertson while they sat in a car on 53rd Street. A third person in the back seat wasn't hurt. Sentencing for Wilson Newleap is scheduled for November 25th. The plea deal caps the punishment at 60 years in prison. And the death of an eastern Iowa woman is being investigated as a homicide. Yesterday, a truck crashed in Benton County just north of Shellsburg. Police say they believe the person behind the wheel stole that truck. Just a short time later, another stolen truck was discovered next to the body of a woman. David Miller was charged with theft in connection to that first stolen truck. He remains under investigation for other charges. And two people are dead after a shooting in a Chicago suburb. Police say four schools were put on lockdown this morning after at least one employee was shot at the Bolingbrook Industrial District. Police would not confirm if the shooter is one of the two dead. The lockdown was lifted after two hours. Search teams are still looking for a missing boater who fell in the Mississippi River over the weekend. They've been trying to find 48-year-old Mark Bauer since Saturday night. Other boaters called police when they saw the Rock Island man go into the water without a life jacket near the I-280 bridge. 
crews with the Coast Guard as well as firefighters from Rock Island and Davenport are among those involved in the search. Well, the scores are in and the Illinois General Assembly isn't looking good. A new statewide poll shows 9 out of 10 people disapprove of the job lawmakers are doing. Illinois has gone 118 days without a budget. Local 4's Kelsey Gibbs explains why some people think the ranking is fair. On the mandatory veto? Four months have passed without a budget. And while lawmakers are here just about once a month, this is all that usually gets done. So if anyone has received a COLA. The General Assembly is currently in continuous session, but members have produced little to no results in solving the budget crisis. Obviously, the sessions that we've had have not, have not worked to this point. Representative Tim Butler is serving his first term in the 99th General Assembly, and he says so far this is an embarrassment to the people of Illinois. I don't think we've done much uh, since, uh, since we've gone uh, past our deadline in May. And what's even more embarrassing is the General Assembly's current performance ranking. A statewide poll from the Illinois Policy Institute has lawmakers barely ranking 10% in approval. Sessions that we've had through the summer and into the fall really haven't produced anything substantive. We continue to have these committees of the whole, which I think are just pandering to the public. When asked if this was a surprise, some people said, Obviously, it's not. The 70% that disapproves of the General Assembly's job say they need to do what they were elected to do. Like, does that come from our taxpaying dollars? I mean, I think that's kind of crazy. While nearly 21% is undecided about lawmakers' current achievements, one mother made up her mind. Lori McCurdy depended on the General Assembly to pass a budget to help fund early intervention, a program that helped her children. She is outraged they have failed to do so. Because if children get an early intervention and they learn and they learn and they have those great opportunities, then they do better in school. She said what lawmakers need to do is get to work. We're looking to save our, our sedate money. This isn't the way to do it. Kelsey Gibbs reporting. Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner says he's willing to compromise more if it means coming to a deal on the state's budget. Rauner visited a few places in the Quad Cities today, including Hill and Valley Bakery in Rock Island. The governor says he's taken some of his turnaround agenda off the table. The governor says he's not pushing his priorities like right-to-work zones and regulating campaign donations from trial lawyers to judges, but he's holding firm to workers' compensation reform and term limits for legislative leaders. If they won't do reforms, we've said, then we're, we're just going to stay the course. And I've got people all around the state saying, Governor, stay strong, don't back down, we need reforms. I've got Democrats saying it just as much as I've got Republicans saying it. This is not a partisan issue, this is a good government reform time. Rauner says he hopes lawmakers will pass the budget in January. After the first of the year, the budget won't need a supermajority vote from lawmakers. It would be an easier bar to clear if they can come to an agreement by then. When state leaders will meet next with the governor to discuss the budget tonight on Local 4 News at 10. J.B. Young Intermediate School could close its doors if the Davenport School District gets its way. The final vote on the possible closure takes place tonight. School board officials say enrollment is low and the building needs $11 million worth of upgrades. If they do vote to close the school, this will be the last academic year. The meeting is already underway and we'll have the latest for you tonight on Local 4 News at 10. Still ahead, what's going up in the Goose Creek Heights neighborhood in Davenport? And the flight that's making it easier to get to the nation's capital. WHBF is local for you with Jim Needleman, Tiffany Lundberg, Chief Meteorologist Andy McRae, and Sports Director Jay Kidwell. This is Local 4 News at 6 in high definition. WHBF is local for Carbon Cliff and local for you. This is Local 4 News at 6. The first direct flight from the Quad City International Airport to Washington, D.C. took off today. It took more than a decade of lobbying local businesses and the government to generate enough money to convince United Airlines to commit to the service. Supporters with the Quad Cities Chamber of Commerce say it will help serve the Rock Island Arsenal and local businesses. When it comes to the real reason we're doing this is the, the military. Um, you know, general's time is uh, important and expensive, and to have them sitting around at some airport re ready to get their connection here and not knowing the reliability factor, uh, that should benefit them considerably. 
Right now, the service is being provided by United Airlines under a three-year agreement that delivers revenue guarantees to the airline. A separate direct flight will take off for D.C. tomorrow. Veterans will be in the air for the 34th annual honor flight of the Quad Cities. The chartered flight leaves at 7 in the morning with the veterans landing back here tomorrow evening. Local 4 News will be along for the ride talking to veterans about the trip to see the monuments built in their honor. Davenport City leaders are celebrating renovations in the Goose Creek neighborhood. A ribbon cutting ceremony celebrated the reopening of the Summer Ridge Apartments on West 65th Street. The apartment owner invested more than $500,000 to combine 35 buildings. Quad Cities Chamber CEO Tara Barney says the renovations are good for attracting businesses as well. Having places where families can anchor their lives and uh, uh, build a home and uh, having them have great facilities like this does, I'm happy to say, uh, really is the difference maker in the Quad Cities. And, and the ribbon cutting also included the celebration of a new playground. Yes, and get use of that playground in before it gets too cold in a couple of months. It's nice yeah. today for yeah. a playground. Today good enough to be outside. Yeah. Tomorrow you want to find something to do inside. A very good chance for rain coming up Tuesday in the Quad Cities. I'll tell you much more about that coming up in just a moment. First, though, here's a quick look at the Almanac numbers for today in the Quad Cities. Pretty close to normal for late October. I'll have your rainy Tuesday forecast next on Local 4 News. And now, Chief Meteorologist Andy McRae with your local 10-point forecast. We had some sunshine early today. Now plenty of clouds around the Quad Cities, and it will stay cloudy tonight. Dry for most of the night, but by Tuesday morning, there will be rain pushing into the area. Here's a live look from our sky cam on our Monday evening. Just around dinner time, and temperatures right around the 50s and 60s in a few spots still. The normal high is 60 degrees. So in the Quad Cities this afternoon, it was very close to normal for this time of year. And right now, 56. That's not a bad temperature for the evening in late October. It's 59 in Alito. We're sitting at 59 in Muscatine and it is 60 in Monmouth right now while it's 57 degrees in Davenport. In the Quad Cities at the airport in Moline, the temperature right now is 56 degrees and the wind is out of the east at 7 miles per hour. Here's a satellite radar, the big picture. You can see what's been happening around the Midwest today and really there hasn't been a lot of rain in our part of the country, but there has been an increase in the cloud cover, the cover over the last couple of hours and these clouds will thicken up even more over the next several hours and there's a lot of moisture heading in our direction and a lot of this moisture will be streaming in from the south from what's left of that big Hurricane Patricia. Still a lot of moisture out there. And you can see right now from Nashville to Huntsville, Alabama and Atlanta and Shreveport, a lot of rain and this is moving off to the north. There'll be an area of low pressure that'll send a lot of this moisture back toward the Quad Cities. So we are looking at a very good chance for rain tomorrow. Just about all of us will pick up some rain on Tuesday. For that, I want to show you our future cast now. This is 7 o'clock tonight. Still just some clouds out there, but not much in the way of rain. And then watch what happens as we get into Tuesday morning. This is 8 o'clock Tuesday morning, south of Interstate 80, along Interstate 74, fairly close to the Quad Cities. There will be some rain. So remember in Galesburg to Monmouth to Burlington, when you head out the door first thing in the morning, there will be light rain already falling in the Quad Cities. As this continues to move off to the north, we will see our rain arrive in the morning up until around lunchtime. That's when it'll start. And then once it's starts. It'll be with us off and on really all day long on Tuesday into Tuesday night and then we'll catch a little bit of a break Wednesday before a few more showers fall later Wednesday and there could be a couple of snowflakes mixing in in portions of Wisconsin and if you go well north of the Quad Cities but a lot of the snow this time around will stay away from our area but it will be a chilly rain at times Tuesday into the day Wednesday as well. Tonight, low temperatures in the 40s. We'll have increasing clouds north of Interstate 80. It stays dry tonight. South of Interstate 80 tonight, there will be some rain arriving late. By Tuesday morning, though, it'll be wet in Minneapolis with a temperature of 47. 47 in Alexis, 48 in Knoxville. So we're mostly cloudy tonight. Rain begins early Tuesday. Here's your local pinpoint forecast now for the Quad Cities. A low of 46 degrees tonight under cloudy skies. Tomorrow, high of 55. It'll be a rainy day. Really not a pretty day coming up at all. Kind of gloomy out there, a little bit raw. There'll be a little bit of a wind. And it gets even windier coming up on Wednesday when we have a high temperature of 56. It'll feel cooler, though, thanks to some gusty winds. And then Thursday, finally, we clear things out. The temperature then 53 degrees. So with a normal high of 60, you can see over the next several days, 
Sundays, we will be checking in below average. And again, the other big weather story, a 100% chance of rain on Tuesday. Weather trivia time now. The Java Lab in the library in Moline is our sponsor this week. Here's today's question. October rain in the Quad Cities so far, above or below average? Below. Yes, I'll go with that. And everybody got it right today, so congratulations, everybody. And congratulations especially to Leticia. She wins today's prize. Now, there could be an inch of rain tomorrow in the Quad Cities. That would actually get us up fairly close to normal. We've had a lot of dry days, but a very wet day on the way tomorrow. All right, thanks. Coming up, how the Spartans coach is approaching the upcoming playoffs. And what a new Mallard says makes him so good on the ice. You're watching Local 4 News at 6. And now, Local 4 Sports with Jay Kidwell. Well, the Greek Club had another fabulous event this afternoon at the Davenport Knights of Columbus. As always, plenty of high school football talk, and now the talk is on the upcoming playoffs. Red Hot Pleasant Valley takes on Muscatine Wednesday night. Here is the Spartans head coach, Rusty Van Wetzinger. Expecting, obviously, a great challenge. It's uh, playoff time. It's one and done. Either uh, move on and uh, do what it takes to, takes to win. And... Um, uh, otherwise, you know, you're done. You know, some guys are done for a career, some guys are done for a year, whatever. But uh, we got a good opponent coming up from Muscatine, kind of an old rivalry in the MAC. So that's kind of exciting, certainly for both communities. They're playing very well. Um, I think when you got two good teams, you know, things like turnovers and, and making plays, making plays on both sides of the ball, and special teams is always a critical component when you got good, two good teams going at it. They're, you know, they're a talented uh, ball club. They got some, some great weapons, particularly at the running back position and the receivers. So, uh, we're expecting a tough challenge. I think we've got some guys that have been battle tested in the last couple of years. We've got veterans, particularly on the defense side of the ball, that have been playoff games, have won playoff games, and uh, I think they know what it takes. Um, you know, that being said, we got to go out and do it. Um, so defensively, I think it's been pretty consistent all year long. Um, I like the way we run the ball. I like the way we tackle. We've been physical. Uh, offensively, we've gotten better and better week after week after week at the quarterback position. Playoff time, fabulous time, and it should be fun on Wednesday night. That's when we've got a bunch of Iowa games coming up. Go For It is coming up tonight at 10 o'clock, and with Halloween on the way Saturday, how about a corn maze challenge? Last year, it took me nearly two hours to get out of this marvelous maze in Alpha at the country corner. We'll check out at 10 o'clock. What happened this year? Well, it didn't take me at least a week. I'm here. Go for it tonight at 10, and as always, I welcome your challenge suggestions, ourquadcities.com. The Mallards had a very nice weekend. They did lose on Friday night, but then they rolled. They had back-to-back -back big games at the iWireless Center, a 5-3 win over Tulsa on Saturday night, and then Sunday afternoon, the Mallards clobbered Wichita 5-2. The Mallards have now played five games this season, seven points. Only one of those five games, they did not get at least one point. Tanner Eberly was the man yesterday, two goals. He also had an assist. He's a terrific young talent, and he is ready to impress the fans at the iWireless Center. Try and be the type of guy that, that brings energy to the rink every game. And, uh, I mean, uh, I was lucky enough to get some good bounces and uh, had lots of chances tonight. And, uh, I mean, tip my hat off to my line mates for uh, getting me the puck at the right times. And, uh, like I said, our line was just... Everything was working out for us, and I think it's a sign of good things to come. This kid is hard and desire. He just works all the time. When I saw them play in uh, uh, Traverse City, and, and I didn't know if they, I was going to get him or not, and I said, boy, this guy's going to be a crowd favorite. He hits guys, he'll fight guys, he goes to the net, he's strong along the boards. Um, just a great kid to have. Just a great kid to have, and I'd like to have like 19 more of those, but uh, we, have a good, we have a good nucleus of good guys that work hard. And the Mallards now begin a three-game road trip uh, off to Missouri for a game Tuesday. And then they go to Norfolk, Virginia before Wheeling, West Virginia. So it is quite the odyssey for those guys. Uh, as Coach told us yesterday, it'll be a good bonding time on the bus. Yeah, long bus rides there. You guys were both there last night, weren't you? you did check out the game yesterday evening. No, no, it and was you fun. went skating After and you came game, back in I, one piece. I survived. So. <laughs> it's been a couple of years since I've been on skates, but it was fun. You're smooth out there. Well, I won't go that far. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Chief Meadrall and Andy McCray is a look at the 10-day when we come back. You're watching Local 4 News at 6. Sounds like a goat. WHBF is local for Davenport and local for you. This is Local 4 News at 6.
Welcome back, Andy. Tomorrow the challenge will be staying dry. And it will be a tough thing to do. We'll have rain in the morning, also through the afternoon into Tuesday night and early Wednesday. A soaking rain coming up for a lot of us. Most of the area will pick up about an inch of rain. And temperatures on the cool side over the next few days. We'll have highs in the 50s, a normal high right now, 60. But for now, again, the big story, a rainy day on the way for Tuesday. Haven't had a lot of them this month, but it will be tomorrow. I think my umbrella's broken. I better get a new one tonight. You need it. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining we'll us. see you again on Local 4 News at 10. Follow Local 4 News 24 hours a day on OurQuadCities.com. Hairstyles provided by Infinity Salon and Spa. WHBF-TV is local for you on Facebook.